Here we have a triangle ABC. We know two angles of this triangle, 60 and 20 degrees. We also know some relationships between the sides or part of the sides. So there is a segment DE uh, that connects side BC and side AC. And we know that AB is the same length as EC and the uh, side CD is the same length as AE. Okay, whatever is green the same length, whatever is red is same length. And we are asked to find this angle X, which is C, D, E. So how are we going to proceed? The general approach to this type of problems, and well, the general approach to solve geometric problems when we don't know what to do, is to start investigation. Look at the angles. Can we find any angles here? Then once you find all the angles, then can you get some ideas about the sides? Find all the sides. Now you know more. Go back to the angles. Now you know the angles. Go back to the sides and keep going, keep going, keep going. Sometimes we get um, in the corner and don't know what to do. In this case, the suggestion would be start doing some kind of uh, geometrical constructions. What kind of constructions can we do here? Normally what helps in this type of problems is to try to construct and find isosceles triangles, equilateral triangles, because those things will give us additional relationship between the sides, between the angles, and so on. So let's see what we can do here. Let's start with angles. We have two angles, 60 and 20 degrees. Well, we can calculate the third angle. It's 180 minus the other two that give us 100 degrees. And that's pretty much it, because, well, what else we can do? We can find this angle D on this side. It's going to be 180 minus this X. We can find this angle here. It's going to be X plus 20 degrees. We can find this angle, like 180 minus X minus 20. But that's about it. So now we need to think about extra things we could build here. So and let's think about some isosceles triangles or equilateral triangles. Well, one thing we can do is to extend the side BC. Okay? And then what we'll do, we'll build another green line like this, green segment, that started point A, it ends at this BC line. Something like this, AF. So now we got FAB as an isosceles triangle. So what can we do about it? Well, let's think about angles first. If this angle is 100 degrees, the angle right here has to be 180 minus 100. So it should be 80 degrees. Since this triangle is isosceles, angles at the base should be congruent. It means that this angle F is 80 degrees as well. And from that information, we can find this angle A here between those two green lines. And that angle is going to be 20 degrees. But now let's look at what we have. We have this angle F of 80 degrees. And we have this angle A together 20 plus 60. That is 80 degrees. So it means that we have a triangle FCA, the big triangle that has two congruent angles, which means that this triangle is isosceles. So AC should be the same as FC. Well, and if this AC is the same as FC, now in AC I see there is a red piece. There's a red piece in FC. Well, it means that this EC, green piece, and FD, have to be the same. So FD should be green too. Okay. Now we got ourselves a isosceles triangle and there are some extra lines in this like line AB which actually of no use to us anymore. So let's get rid of it. And now uh, we keep looking for isosceles triangles, equilateral triangles. And one thing we see there is AF and FD, they're both green. So if I connect A and D, I'm going to get an isosceles triangle. 
angles at the base should be the same, so this angle D should be the same as angle A, or this portion of angle A, and they both will be 50 degrees. Now, since all this big angle A is 80, the top part is 50, the bottom part has to be 30. And the next step we're going to do is something already done previously in one of the previous videos. There is a link to this video here. And what we're going to do here is we're going to put a circle around triangle ADC. We're going to take this triangle ADC now, put it in the circle. So in this case, triangle ADC will be inscribed triangle. And we're going to continue producing the isosceles triangles. But before we're going to do it, we need a little bit of theory. And that's what I'm going to talk about. First of all, if I have a circle and I have this angle B, which is called inscribed angle, because the vertex B is on the circle and the sides of the angle are crossing the circle at point A and C. Now, we also going to create another angle, angle AOC, and that angle is what's called central angle. The point O is the center of the circle. But notice, both this inscribed angle and the central angle, they're intercepting the same arc of the circle. And there is a property of those two angles. It turned out that the inscribed angle here, B, is a half of the central angle, O. Next thing we're going to do, we're going to build another inscribed angle, D. Notice this angle, D, also goes through points A and C. It also intercepts the same uh, arc of the circle. And because of that, that angle D should be also half of the same central angle. And therefore, angle D and angle B should have the same measure, so they're congruent. Now, let's continue with this idea. Let's connect the points A and C. And now what we see here is two triangles. Triangle ABC and triangle ADC, which share the same side, one side AC, and also the angles opposite of that side are congruent. Okay? And that's what happens when you have two triangles like this, they, which are both inscribed into the same circle. But now let's look at this problem from another angle. Let's consider just two triangles like this, triangle ABC and triangle ADC. They share the same side, and also we know that angle B and angle D are congruent. Okay. We don't know anything about the circle now, but we know that these angles B and D are congruent. Well, it could be shown in this case that both of these triangles could be inscribed into the same circle. The next thing we're going to do we're going to connect point B and D, and when we do, we're going to get ourselves a, an inscribed quadrilateral, A, B, D, C. Now, not every quadrilateral can be inscribed. Every triangle could be inscribed, but not every quadrilateral could be inscribed. And let's find the center of the circle O and connect all these vertices A and D. Let's look at this angle C, this blue angle, and also let's look at this green angle, which I call alpha. Notice both of these angles intercepting the same arch, like here, arch from A to D that goes through point B. And as such, uh, the inscribed angle C should be half of the green angle alpha. In a similar way, let's consider angle B now, this orange angle. And let's consider this gray angle beta. Notice that this angle beta is actually more than 180 degrees, but that's okay. 
that's fine. Notice that gray angle and this orange angle, they intercept the same arc, this AD that goes through C. And as such, the orange angle should be half of this angle back. Now, if we add them up, this both expression together, we're going to get that measure of B plus measure of C should be half of the measure of this A plus B together. But notice, what is A plus B? A plus B is actually a full circle. So A plus B is 360 degrees. It means that B plus C should give us 180 degrees. So notice what we proved just now, that if I have inscribed quadrilateral, the sum of opposite angles should be 180 degrees. Now let's look at this picture from a different perspective. Let's say we have a quadrilateral. We don't know anything about any circles. We just have a quadrilateral. And we know the sum of opposite angles is 180 degrees. So it could be shown that this quadrilateral is inscribed. So there is a circle that goes around it. Essentially, what we were talking about is that any quadrilateral is inscribed if and only if the sum of opposite angles is 180 degrees. Essentially, it goes both ways. So if it is inscribed quadrilateral, sum of opposite angles should be 180 degrees. And if the sum of opposite angles is 180 degrees, then this quadrilateral is inscribed. Okay? So now we're going to use these properties. Not all of them, some of them. I just gave it all to you so you know that because those properties are actually a very good thing to know and can be used in many, many problems. So let's go back. We have a circle. We have our triangle. And what we're going to do, we're going to create a radius. So we're going to connect the center of the circle, point O, with the vertices of this triangle. Now they're all light blue because they all have the same length, their radii, right? But now when I created all this radius, I created a bunch of isosceles triangles. Let's investigate. First of all, let's start with angles. Let's look at this angle, A, O, D. That is a central angle for this angle of 20 degrees, because notice both of those angles are intercepting the same arch. And therefore, it should be twice as much, which is 40 degrees. In a similar way, the angle right here, C, O, D, will be twice as much as this angle of 30 degrees. Now we know these angles, we can look at the isosceles triangles that we created. First of all, triangle D, O, C. It's an isosceles, has one angle of 60 degrees. Angles at the base, this angle D here and angle C, have to be congruent. And if you do the math, we find that both angles should be 60 degrees. And it means that triangle ODC has all angles of 60 degrees, which means this triangle is equilateral. And that means that blue line and the red line are the same. So let's paint them that way. The next thing we can do is we look at this triangle AOD, which is also isosceles. It has angles 40 degrees here. Angles at the base should be the same, and there will be 70 degrees. And left angle is split in 30 and 40 degrees. Now, also look at this AO and AE, which have the same length. Therefore, triangle OAE is an isosceles triangle. One angle is 40 degrees, the other two have to be 70. This one is 70, and here the 60 degree angle is going to be split into 30 and 30. Now, what else can we do? Well, uh, when I look at problems like this, I always look at 
congruent sides and congruent angles and trying to find something there, isosceles equilateral triangles and things like that. But now let's look at this angle of 70 degrees and this angle of 70 degrees. Okay. So what we see here when it comes to this angle of 70 degrees, we see this triangle ADO, this blue triangle. When we look at this angle of 70 degrees, we see this green triangle, AEO. And that's exactly the situation we discussed earlier. We have two triangles that share one side, and the angles opposite of those sides are congruent. Okay. Well, in this case, it means that both of these triangles are inscribed into the same circle. And it also means that quadrilateral a, D, E, O is inscribed in the same circle. But since quadrilateral is inscribed, opposite angle should give me 180 degrees. This angle O, it's 40 plus 30, 70 degrees. Therefore, this angle D here, between black and black line, should give me 110 degrees. And if this whole thing is 110, this piece is 70, this angle right here should be 40 degrees. Now let's look at the this angle, ODC. That is an angle of an equilateral triangle. And we know this angle is 60 degrees. So if whole angle is 60 degrees, one part is 40, the other part has to be 20. And that's the final answer. Well, here I would like to make another comment. Although I solved this problem using the properties of inscribed quadrilaterals, and I really believe that knowing these properties is very good and advantageous if you want to learn how to solve problems in geometry, really this problem doesn't require that knowledge. So one thing you could do and solve this problem in a somewhat different way is to notice that ADEO is an isosceles trapezoid. To understand why ADEO is an isosceles trapezoid, uh, first thing you need to note is that the blue triangle ADO and the green triangle AEO are congruent. And they're congruent because they both have those red lines, one and the other one. And the angle between those red lines are 40 degrees. So those triangles are congruent by two sides and an angle between them. And from that it follows that AD is the same length as OE. Another thing we need to note is that this angles at the base, this angle here is 70 degrees, and this angle here is 70 degrees. And from that you can prove that this is an isosceles trapezoid, and from that you will get this, this angle is 40 degrees and you can find x 